Kenneth said, I'm Tom Essel. I'm the assistant director for the original model project. There's our exploded logo up there. Um, <clears throat> at the original model project, a little bit what, about what we do. Uh, we, I thought that was my phone. <laughs> I was like, no. Uh, at the original model project, we promote the use of e pluribus unum instead of, or in addition to, the more divisive motto in God we trust. Uh, like our name implies, e pluribus unum is the original de facto motto of the United States. Um, and uh, for those who skipped Latin class, it stands for from many one. Uh, the original motto was intended to symbolize a diverse group of people coming together for uh, one cause, or one common cause, which at the time was, of course, the American Revolution and the forming of the New American Republic. So in 1955, Congressman Charles Bennett, who was responsible for In God We Trust, becoming uh, the national motto, uh, he asked the Legislative Reference Service of the Library of Congress for information about U.S. mottos. And they responded to him, if one motto were to be designated as being more clearly the motto than any other, it would seem to be e pluribus unum. This has priority in time, having been officially chosen in 1782 and confirmed by the new government under the Constitution of 1789. And is the only motto on the obverse seal of the United States. The motto on the seal of a government is generally considered to be the motto of that government. So keep this in mind next time somebody uses the tradition argument uh, on you for in God we trust. So for nearly 170 years, E Pluribus Unum acted as the motto of the United States until a growth in public religiosity and uh, Cold War anti-communist tensions kind of prompted a series of events that led to the motto being uh, changed to In God We Trust in 1956. Uh, in God We Trust had appeared on denominations of coins starting way back in 1864, uh, kind of off and on, but it never enjoyed status as like an official motto. And of course, all this begs the question, so what? What does a motto matter? And it's all just words, right? Well, today we are going to talk about that. I remember to use this. Um, so today I'm going to make the case about why you should care about opposing In God We Trust, uh, briefly discuss why I think Evil Lord Basunum sends a better message, and discuss some general rules uh, for activism. I've divided this into uh, two parts. Uh, part one deals with In God We Trust. I'm going to break for questions. Everybody always, always has questions. And then I have a second half, and then we'll do questions again. All right. <clears throat> so in our work at the Original Model Project, we encounter two common criticisms and complaints. So the first usually comes from guys who look like this. <laughs> and that is the chief of police in Childress, Texas. Um, if I remember correctly, he told me to leave the country. Um, so they usually tell us that we don't like in God we trust, that we can leave their county, or don't come to their county, leave the country, things of that nature. Basically, if you don't uh, love it, leave it, type things. We usually roll our eyes, have a good laugh, or we'll talk crap about them in chat. Mark, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> uh, however, the second complaint we get is a little bit more obnoxious, and it comes from people who are like nominally on our side of the In God We Trust, uh, argument, by which I mean secularists. Uh, it usually goes something like this. Why does it matter? There are bigger issues to deal with other than silly mottos. And these people think that what we do is completely irrelevant. And I apologize for all the terrible dad jokes. Strapping people, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. In fact, we recently had a comment from one such person. Uh, I'm only going to refer to him as Mr. Smarty Pants. And Mr. Smarty Pants told us that in God we trust is just a motto. Religions will transform, some will perhaps even die in their own time, no thanks to petty little causes like this one. He was a, real, he was a peach. Um, consider finding something more important to do with your time and serving your money. He also claimed that anything to do with patriotic models like E Pluribus Unum and God we trust, anything like that, is a dated issue and they're rapidly moving beyond nationality. Mr. Smarty Pants, for you. Uh, first off, I want to make very clear the original motto project does not want to kill religion. Uh, in fact, we have religious supporters, uh, Jews, Buddhists, Christians, uh, Muslims, pagans, they all pop up from time to time. Our movement is about promoting an inclusive worldview that rejects tying religiosity to patriotism and instead, is taught, and instead ties unity and diversity to patriotism. Now, if you're an anti-nationalist, that probably doesn't appeal to you, and that's fine. But consider that we live in a nationalistic world now. And whatever the future might look like, 
we should probably be dealing with the present. These type of criticisms I lump into the bigger fish to fry category. Whatever specific form they take, they don't make the same argument that there's a bigger fish to fry. There's something more worthy of our time somewhere else. However, I think when it comes to issues of separation of church and state, in God we trust just isn't the biggest fish to fry, it's actually the biggest fish in the pond. In the 60 some years of its existence, we've not been able to reel it in. Every legal challenge to it has failed, and changing public perceptions about what the motto means and what it stands for have proven difficult at best. Uh, so on God we trust is the biggest fish in the pond. It is the holy mackerel. <laughs> yeah, I told you. It, it only gets worse from here. So why does this fish need to be reeled in? The answer is actually incredibly simple. As a symbol, in God we trust gives the impression that other church and state violations are not only justified, but encouraged by the state. Uh, in God we trust, or any motto matters because of what people believe it means. Uh, in God we trust promotes a worldview that Kevin, uh, I always screw that up, that historian Kevin Chris says encourages unity through divinity, thereby alienating seculars of both a religious and non-religious persuasion. Uh, in 1951, the New York Board of Regents issued a statement saying belief in and dependence upon Almighty God was the very cornerstone upon which our founding fathers built this country. And uh, the U New York Board of Regents oversaw public education in the state, and they thought it would be a good idea to suggest that New York schools impose this belief on children, on children uh, by having them recite what became known as the Regents Prayer. And here's the Regents Prayer. Everybody, clasp your hands. <laughs> Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon thee, and we get thy blessing upon us, our parents, our teachers, and our country. Um, several schools in this, uh, across the state adopted the Regents' Prayer, and as you might imagine, this led to a lawsuit. Uh, Engel versus Vitale, uh, parents sued the Herrick Union School District in New Hyde Park, New York, over First Amendment violations, as you can imagine. Um, all the parents that sued were Jewish, which is interesting. Um, now, what seems to us to be a cut and dry First Amendment violation it wasn't so cut and dry back in the late 50s and early 60s when this was going on. Incredibly, the parents lost in every single lower court. Uh, the courts continually citing that the prayer acknowledging God was part of our nation's heritage. And I'll give you one guess what was inscribed in every single one of those courtrooms. Um, it's a little bit grainy, but it says in God we do. You got the beat? No. <laughs> okay, no, they do not. Um, that is a courtroom in New York City. If you just Google New York courtrooms in God We Trust, like, they're all over the place. Um, eventually, in 1962, the parents won their lawsuit after the Supreme Court figured out that the prayer was, in fact, a religious exercise. Uh, however, the court was sure to note in their ruling, or that their ruling wasn't inconsistent with manifestations in our public life of belief in God. And by this, the court meant, uh, in God we trust as the motto, under God and the Pledge of Allegiance, singing patriotic songs like God Bless America, um, oaths under, you know, so help me God type thing. The problem was, is most people couldn't tell the difference between those things, which are supposedly ceremonial, and forcing children to pray to Almighty God. And my guess is because there isn't actually a difference. So predictably, uh, people freaked out about the Supreme Court ruling. Uh, against prayer in schools. Representative Fred Marshall of Minnesota was so upset about the court's ruling that he proposed the House protest it, and protest that they did, by putting up something I think everyone here is probably familiar with. This. Uh, that's the In God We Trust uh, inscription above the rostrum uh, in the House of Representatives, U.S. House of Representatives. Um, here's President Kennedy, a little bit better picture. President Kennedy speaking under it around the time it went up. And President Obama speaking under it. And John Boehner looking very orange. <laughs> um, Representative William Randolph from here in Missouri uh, was strict to the point about this. And he said it is, in a not so subtle way, our answer to the recent decision of the U.S. Supreme Court order banning the Regents Prayer from New York State schools. So, surprise, they put that up to protest the church of state, church and state violations being uh, thrown out by the court. And I'll let you all muse over why they picked that particular phrase. 
And the problem with God we trust is that it promotes a worldview that so blurs the line between the religious and the secular that most people, not even members of the government, can tell where one ends and the other begins. Uh, for a more recent example, late last year, Texas Governor Greg Abbott issued a statement in support of the God we trust uh, stickers being put on uh, sheriff patrol vehicles in Texas, writing, as the Supreme Court has held time and time again, the Constitution commands acknowledgement and accommodation of religion rather than hostility towards it. Given these well-established principles, it is unsurprising that In God We Trust has survived every legal challenge. Now, in February of this year, Governor Abbott came out in support of Sheriff Ronnie Dodson, placing these Christian crosses on all his patrol vehicles in Brewster County, Texas. Um, Governor Abbott said through a spokesman that the Constitution demands respect for religious expression rather than hostility towards it, and Governor Abbott fully supports Sheriff Dodson's decision to allow his deputies to display the cross on their patrol vehicles. Now, this is such a bright audience, I'm sure I don't need to point out that Governor Abbott is using the exact same argument for In God We Trust that he's using for blatant Christian symbols. Uh, the other issue is that it helps feed the pers uh, Christian persecution complex. Whenever someone is told they can't do something, like have uh, official prayer in school, they immediately point to In God We Trust and claim their freedoms are being taken away. Uh, here in Missouri, again, it's always Missouri. <laughs> uh, in 2014, Lebanon High School principal Kevin Lowry delivered a commencement speech before the graduating class, uh, lamenting that he wasn't allowed to mention God or have an official prayer with the kids. Aww. And it was very sad for him. Uh, and why did Lowry think that he should be allowed to preach at the students? Because in his words, God is reflected in the very fabric of the nation. And he was sure to remind the students in his sermon that uh, the motto of the United States is in God we trust. Um, uh, the speech was so controversial that the school district had to issue an apology over it because people went nuts. And the apology predictably stirred up the persecution complex. They're taking away Kevin Lowry's religious freedom, the high school's religious freedom, everyone's religious freedom was up for grabs that day. Uh, it's a theme we see over and over again in our work. Uh, a few weeks ago in Roan County, West Virginia, the Sheriff's Office put in God We Trust in all their police cruisers. When questioned by WSAZ News in West Virginia, one woman was excited about the addition of the decals because, quote, we've lost a lot of our religious freedom here and we need to get back to that. Uh, unfortunately, she didn't elaborate, so I'm not really sure what freedom she actually had taken away from her. Um, but it's worth noting that the news report mentioned that the woman lived on Church Street and works on restoring the Market Street Chapel, which is the oldest building in Spencer, West Virginia, which is in Rome County. The newscast even began the segment by saying, church and state coming together on law enforcement vehicles. Now, though in most cases, church and state violations committed by officials by Sheriff Dodson, Principal Lori, or the New York Board of Regents are rectified, the mere fact that they believe themselves to be justified to begin with places an undue burden on secular-minded citizens. Like in the region's prayer case, it's up to the citizens themselves to seek a remedy for the violation, uh, whether that be through legal action, standing at the local school board, speaking out against the governor. Uh, each time a secular-minded citizen takes a stand against these violations, they risk losing social and business connections. Uh, not to mention the years it can take to get through the court system. Uh, the region's prayer case, I think, took four or five years to actually work its way through. Uh, many of them are afraid to speak out, justifiably so. And meanwhile, symbols like Ngawi Trust continue to give the appearance that religion is woven into the fabric of our nation and encourages government officials to continually attempt to break the wall of separation, usually without even realizing they're doing it. Opposing in God we trust has very little to do with opposing the words themselves and more to do with opposing a specific mindset and set of beliefs, a belief, set of beliefs that have real world consequences for people. So as we speak, actually yesterday he was in uh, Arizona. So as we speak, uh, Billy Graham impersonator Franklin Graham uh, is on a 50 state tour. Called, he really is just like a bad imitation of his father. He's on a 50 state tour called the Decision America Tour. Uh, it's the quintessential example of the mindset promoted by In God We Trust. Graham says that the purpose of the tour is to, quote, challenge Christians to live out their faith at home, in public, and at the ballot box. 
He wants Christians to, quote, honor God with their vote, supporting where possible candidates who will uphold biblical principles, including the sanctity of life and the sacredness of marriage. I'm sure you can see where he's going with that. And what does Graham use to symbolize the ideas spouted by his tour? Surprise, it's this one. Uh, that is a screenshot from Graham's promotional video. I had to sit through this whole thing, and it was horrible. <laughs> um, now, Graham doesn't, just doesn't think that In God We Trust is a potent symbol. He thinks it's necessary. Uh, he's saying of the recent Michael Newdow lawsuit over In God We Trust, that I wonder if these people realize just what can and will happen to a nation and a people who want nothing to do with Almighty God or his hand of protection. And you can't see it in my notes, but um, uh, Franklin Graham spelled realize incorrectly. S instead of the Z. So consider for a moment what the followers of people like Graham believe about the world. Consider what in God we trust symbolizes for them, and then consider what they're willing to do with their votes. This is a worldview that seeks to impose a specific brand of Christianity on the rest of America. It's one that totally rejects the viewpoints of other people. It's majoritarian, it's totalitarian, and before you discount Ram himself uh, as a washed up has-been, consider that he has 3.4 million Facebook followers, which is more than God himself. <laughs> In summation, I think that uh, Jason Bronner, a fan of ours on Facebook, uh, put it best when it comes to In God We Trust, Gods and goddesses have divided mankind for as long as recorded history, most likely even longer. Which one is the right one? What if someone else believes in another one? And God we trust undermines the original intent of unifying the people as one as Americans first. For these reasons, the original model project is seeking to challenge the and God we trust mindset of unity from divinity, with the hopes of bringing back the pluribus unum mindset of unity through diversity. And that is it for the first Section, are there any questions or anything? Ever? Of course, Lacey has a question. <laughs> uh, Michael Newdow, isn't he the same one that back like 15 or, 15 or 20 years ago started the um, something against the Pledge of Allegiance? Yeah, he sued, um, that was uh, Newdow versus Elk Grove Unified? Oh, yes, that's correct. I think it was the Elk Grove mm -hmm. case. Yeah, he sued over um, under God being in the Pledge of Allegiance, mm -hmm. but the court ruled that. If I remember correctly, he could be wrong. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't have, have standing because he wasn't. Child. Yeah, he didn't have custody. He was like the stepfather, I think, is what it was. No, he was the father, but he, he wasn't the custody. custodial father. Ah. I should just have like Thomas, like, this right here, and be like, ask him questions. <laughs> Anything else, David? Uh, in the multiple discussions you've had with people who want to promote In God We Trust, mm -hmm. have you found a most effective or more commonly effective way to convey your side of the argument? What, what has been the most effective? I have, way? and that is a great question. Why, thank you. For the second half. <laughs> uh, there is an effective way of doing it. Um, I'll just, real briefly, um, not directly opposing in God We Trust works really well. Um, Offer you pluribus unum or something, or uh, a lot of times they're resistant to evil or resume because they don't know what it means. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's a lot of coins. So a lot of times we will offer, because like, well, we write emails to these people and such, and we'll say, well, why don't you put up e pluribus unum, or you can put up its English equivalent out of many one. And um, that that's worked a couple of times. Um, in uh, we deal with so many of them. Uh, I was in North Carolina. We wrote to, um, I think that one was a city council or a county commission. It was one of the two that was going to put it up. And at first we wrote them, hey, why don't you put up E Pluribus Unum, da 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 da. And they wrote back like this diatribe about like anti Obama. I don't even know. Like <laughs> anti Obama, the Mexicans are all coming to take our jobs. It was crazy, the craziest email I've ever got. And uh, so I wrote back, well, you know, uh, E Pluribus Unum stands for from many one. And as soon as I gave him the English version, he's like, oh, yeah, that's, really, that's a really great idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, any, anything? Yeah, related question. So, um, yeah, I, I've also been uh, paying attention to the 
and God we trust and all the Roman cross, the Latin crosses going on to the police cars and as a queer person of color, if I were to somehow get arrested, I'd probably get charged with resisting arrest because I'd be scared. <laughs> Having said that, um, I'm not an attorney, maybe there are some uh, lawyers in the room, but my question is, pertains specifically to the, cro the Latin cross that's going on to the car. Totally illegal. So, right, and so <laughs> wouldn't that violate, or does, my question is, does that violate the establishment clause? Uh, yeah, there are several court rulings that rule that. So, that so can't for instance, if he, the, the sheriff there, he's going to lose. Yeah, he's going to lose, and he's going to have to take his crosses okay. off. But there's going to be a big fight over it first. Yeah. So another, uh, another tactic perhaps could be maybe you know, uh, pentagrams, you know, from the satanic. I'm just wondering we, if that would we work. are we are we are against any religious symbol being put on government property. <laughs> point being, I see, they would I see your point. Yeah. Right. But they also they don't. Well, they really don't understand how it makes people feel. They always say, we hear a lot, well, nobody in the county cares. We didn't get any, we didn't get any complaints. Well, yeah, because they're scared of you. Mm -hmm. That's why they haven't said anything, because they're terrified of you. Um, so when screenshots come into play. Yeah, yeah, we, we actually take, just, we take screenshots, because we, we'll comment on there. We'll get people who live there to comment, mm -hmm. and we'll screenshot it, and then a lot of times, the sheriff's department or city, whoever it is, will go and actually delete the comments. Okay. And then when the news goes and asks them a couple of days later, well, and they'll say, no, all the, all the comments were positive. Well, of course they were if you deleted all the negative ones. Wow. I don't know about this particular sheriff, but yeah. I've heard in the past their argument would be they're using their own money to purchase the decals or whatever. Yes. Is that, a, is that a good workaround? Do they have any standing for that? When it comes to in God We Trust, it really doesn't matter who pays for it because it's been upheld in the courts. And so um, it's irrelevant if they use taxpayer money for it. I live in Greene County, Missouri, and uh, the sheriff there used the sheriff's discretionary fund to pay for it. Um, but a lot of times they will kind of trot that out and they'll say, well, well, we didn't use taxpayer money. We used our money. We used our money. Okay, oh, so you get to put whatever you want on government property with your own money? Great, I've got all kinds of stuff I want to put on there. So, of course, then they back off and they say, oh, no, no, it's the motto. Uh, I think there was something. Yeah, in the back. Uh, so, basically, like, so what I'm taking away from this is like, you're saying that one of the reasons I like, oppose it would be like, um, people use like the eight dollar trust in like building blocks. Yes, that's a really great way of putting it. Absolutely. It gives the impression that all these other things are okay. Is anytime you say, no, no, you can't have prayer in schools, inevitably somebody will be like, well, we just can't do anything. Our, our motto is in God we trust, but we can't trust in God in our schools. It, it gives that impression that it really it blurs that line where people really don't understand where the line is. Yeah, Thomas Edelman. Okay. Yeah. Um, what was the uh, Supreme Court case that ruled that the uh, in God we trust was basically secular? Oh yeah, um, ceremony. <coughs> what year? There was, was that? actually I don't really remember, but there was a series of them. It might have been. What year was that? I'm, I'm not sure. What year. It was in the 50s. Which was it? Was it the Zorach versus Clausen? I'm not sure. But I know that they used the phrase ceremonial deism. So, yeah, right. ceremonial deism. Okay, so. That there is a ruling that in God we trust is secular. Yes. By the courts. It it doesn't say specifically in God we trust. It, it has to do with um, um, invocations of God, okay. of which they consider in God we trust. Okay. The one that I was thinking about was where the actual uh, phrase. And there's another one, Arno versus somebody. Well, what what I'm I'm the question's getting yeah. to is. Okay, let's say that the court was right, which they're not, that that was secular. Mm -hmm. Now that we have these, you know, proliferation of these uh, government agencies who the people who are uh, adhering the sticker to our vehicles saying that, well, this is because of Jesus and, you know, yeah. you got to, you know, we're Christian here. Can that change that status? where it can be challenged on that prior case to come forward. I don't know. You're more than welcome to try. I have no idea. I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to comment on that. Um, but 
I'm just thinking. It would, it would be, I'd like to see that, because that does happen all the time. There was one in Virginia a couple days ago. He was on the news, and he's like, I just want everyone to know that our deputies, we trust in the Lord. Like, and it was very, I mean, he sounded like Colonel Sanders, like, <laughs> and, um, but they can, ceremonial deism essentially makes it where their intentions are irrelevant. Like, they can literally come out and be like, this is about my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ protecting my deputy, and it, it's irrelevant. Ceremonial deism makes it where it's just completely irrelevant. You have to, the, the way to go about it, legal challenges don't work. You have to get people to understand that it's divisive or show people that it's divisive, um, and which will prevent them from putting it on there. But isn't that their goal? I'm sorry. I interrupted. Sorry. Yeah, he had a big question. I apologize. It's OK. I forgive you this once. <laughs> Next time, I'll have you throw it out. Um, so I'm from Green County as well. Oh, I'm sorry. Is, is there any hope for removing that from the officer cars? With R not in charge, no. No. Well, <laughs> got a razor blade. Uh, <laughs> not with R not in charge. R not has too much. Anybody else from Green County? I know Lacey is. All okay, right, yeah. Okay, with R Sheriff R not in charge, he's not going to listen. He doesn't care what people have to say. He's much. Has anybody here ever met Jim R not, the sheriff? You have. Did you like him as much as I did? He was okay. Yeah, but I didn't want to bring up that issue at that moment. That wasn't a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, not with our not in charge. The, the way to deal with it in Greene County is to go vote and remove Sheriff R. Hunt. And he's up for election this year. Well, probably in that county, there's a big chance of that. Mm -hmm. People want Jim or not. Uh, him and then, yeah. And then I gotta go on to part two. You, you, you said something. Oh no! Well, you, you were talking about trying the, the way to handle it yeah. is to communicate to people that in fact it's divisive. But yeah. isn't that in fact their, the goal of doing this? I mean, if I bring that up, and that's, I'll get to that. I have a story about that. Okay. But yeah. Uh, do you see the majority of the, the police the, the police forces that are adopting the stickers in their vehicles? Do you see that as equivalent to a form of Christian supremacy? Mm. Is it being recorded? <laughs> um, I'm or not sure. It, Christian supremacy. I'm not sure really. I, I think I think for some people it is about patriotism. Because like I said, the, the line's been so blurred between Christianity and patriotism and all that. You can't tell where one is and the other begins. Um, but I notice it's mostly conservative sheriffs. So I'm wondering if this isn't some sort of persecution complex type thing. Oh, they're trying to take away everything by electing Obama. And <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's how these people think. I, mean, I know Jim Arnold does. So um, I don't know if it's a supremacy thing so much as they're doing it because of the persecution complex. And then with the privilege on top of that, they don't understand. Like, it literally doesn't compute in their heads why anyone would have a problem with this. Like, nine times out of ten, and this is going to sound mean, we're not dealing with the brightest crayons in the box. Like, Has there been a reality. case where it's not been a majority Christian sheriff or organization that opted to put the the no. Agave trust stickers? Or is it 100% across the board always some form of Christian? It's always a, it's always a Christian of some kind, of, always. Um, and uh, there's been a few like city councils and stuff in California who have put it up, um, but it was always at the request of a Christian group, uh, which is in God we trust. Incorporated, or God We Trust America Incorporated. Yeah, 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 him. And, which is funny because it's also the name of a dead Kennedy album. So. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, this next section is real short. So. Uh, as I mentioned before the break, uh, all your wonderful questions and blurting out loud. Sorry. It's, I'm just joking. Dude. <laughs> the Regional Model Project is uh, looking to promote the idea that e pluribus unum better represents the United States than it does in God We Trust. As I hope I've made clear, in God We Trust sends the wrong message, so I briefly want to discuss why I think e pluribus unum sends the right message. Uh, stop it. As I mentioned previously, e pluribus unum was chosen as the model for the Great Seal of the United States back in 1782, approved by Congress in 1789. And despite what many people believe today, early America around the time of the founding was full of symbols of strength through unity 
not strength through religion. This is not to say that religion did not inform the worldviews of people back then, but rather that religion did not typically play a part in the national symbolism at the time. And of course, there are exceptions to that but in general. Uh, in fact, America's very first political cartoon carried a message of unity. In 1754, Benjamin Franklin produces famous join or die woodcut for the Pennsylvania Gazette. Uh, at the time, uh, Franklin was part of a movement calling for the various colonies to come together uh, mutual against, against the mutual defense against the French, who had just taken uh, the Ohio Valley, uh, kicked George Washington out of there. Uh, the woodcut was later revived during the opening years of the Revolution. Uh, sometimes it appears as unite or die instead of join or die. And a short digression, I would like to point out that the snake would be just fine if we locked off South Carolina. Yes. <laughs> Um, so the early American Republic uh, also adopted the Roman fasces, I think I'm saying that right, I'm probably not, uh, a symbol of unbreakable power through unity. For those who don't know, the fasces is a bundle of sticks around an axe, uh, it was a symbol of the power of the state uh, during the Roman Republic, uh, the message is pretty simple, alone the sticks are easily breakable, bundled together you can't break them. Uh, the Fasces makes a notable appearance in the House Chambers, and this is a really, really old picture. Uh, this is the original rostrum, uh, the uh, House of Representatives. And so it's hard to see, but the Fasces are here and here. And here is a better picture of them, off to the sides. You can see the bundle of sticks, and this is the orange banner picture. Uh, a similar theme pops up on the seal of the United States, where we find the motto, E Pluribus Unum. Uh, the eagle clutches a bundle of 13 arrows, and same concept, individually you can snap the arrows, bundle together, you can't break them. This borrows from uh, Iroquois um, symbolism. If I remember correctly, they use seven? I could be wrong about that. But uh, of course there's 13 there, because 13 states. Um, so because the United States at the time had an extremely diverse population in terms of political, philosophical, and religious opinions, just like it does today, the federal government sought to foster the concept that diverse groups of people could come together to form an unbreakable bond, and they did this through their symbolism. Symbolism is very powerful. Uh, this is the original mindset that our founders promoted, and the mindset that we wish to foster through our work at the original modern project. So before I finish up, I want to make a few quick points about how to oppose in God and trust and promote e pluribus unum. There are some activism rules based on my experience. <coughs> if you can quote parts of the Caribbean to it. Uh, so number one, never directly opposing God we trust. I mentioned that one. Um, offer e pluribus unum as a more inclusive alternative. Offer e pluribus unum in addition to, like start to get that kind of, the, plant the seed basically. Uh, we refer to this among ourselves as being obnoxiously reasonable. The more reasonable you are, the more uh, obnoxious your opponent looks. Um, meet people where they are. E pluribus unum is about including everyone's viewpoints. Use religious language with religious people to explain why e pluribus unum is better. And I'm sure there are people in this room groaning about that. But it does work. Uh, I was actually talking to um, a Southern Baptist on Tuesday, and uh, just talking about uh, original model project stuff, because he saw one of my pamphlets like laying around on the on the coffee table. He was asking me about it, and so I was trying to explain it, and he just really wasn't getting it. He's like, "No, oh, God this and God that, yeah, whatever, dude." Um, so here's how I explained it. Uh, I used the story of John the Baptist. And I'm positive that I butchered the story, but I, it worked. So, um, well, I told him, I was like, well, look at John the Baptist. I said, John the Baptist, his complaint was that the temple authorities were excluding people from the temple and excluding them from God's kingdom, so on and so forth. Um, you know, you're, you're too poor, you can't afford the sacrifices, you're, you're a leper, you're not pure enough. And uh, you're a woman, you can't. What John the Baptist said was, no, 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 God's kingdom is for everyone. 
Uh, all you have to do is do the, you know, the shh, where he gets his name from, and, uh, and you're in. So John the Baptist is the originally Pluribusunum guy from many one. It's open to everybody, all viewpoints, and everybody. And believe it or not, that worked. <laughs> and he actually helped me edit. The reason the pamphlet was on my coffee table because I was editing it. And uh, he actually helped me edit the, uh, the pamphlet, and he's on board now. So if you meet people where they are and use the symbols that they recognize, you're more likely to make a breakthrough. Never assume that the individual uh, promoting in God we trust is pushing theocracy. I see that comment a lot. Um, oh, you're just a theocrat. You're just a theocrat. Mm, not always. Sometimes, but not always. There are 60 plus years of indoctrination behind the phrase. Um, many of these people don't even realize how divisive it really is. Uh, for others, it really is about patriotism. So down in Springfield, and my Green County people might remember this, Justin Burnett, the city councilman for Springfield, tried putting God we trust up in the council chambers uh, earlier this year, or last year. And um, so people on both sides of this argument came out in droves. I mean, it was the most packed the city council chambers had been uh, almost ever until the first minute thing happened, but that's something else. Um, and so the, because it was so divisive, the motion got tabled. Uh, died in committee. And I talked to Justin Burnett uh, uh, last month. We went had coffee together. I just asked him about it. I said, so the, uh, the Ngami Trust thing, like, what, what was your take on that? And he told me, he's like, I literally had no idea that people would be that offended by it. He's like, I just didn't even know. He's like, I was, I was stunned. And so now another city council member, Christy Fulnecki, who's running for mayor, it's like your intro to Springfield politics. Um, she is running on a platform, and part of her platform is bringing Ngawi Trust back. So, yeah. Where do you go? So, uh, at first glance, you think, oh, great, now Justin Burnett's going to get his way. Well, actually, the experience of that was so like, disheartening for him that he, Justin Burnett has stated publicly that not only will he oppose bringing Ngawi Trust back, but if somehow it makes it through committee, uh, he will support an amendment including e pluribus unum. So, That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. We'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally, remember this is an emotional argument. This is not an intellectual argument. You can throw all the facts and figures you want at them. In 1782, this happened. In 1950, that. It's irrelevant. Um, yeah. Identities are based around. around our understandings of history, whether those are false or not. So there's an identity based around this in God we trust concept. So when you're challenging people on this, just remember that you're, in a way, you're challenging their identity, which kind of ties back into never directly opposing it, because people will shut down immediately. Uh, and I believe that is all I have. Maybe. Yep, there's our contact info. If you want to get a hold of us, there's my email. Uh, Chris McDowell is our outreach coordinator. He's cool. Uh, find us on Facebook, Twitter, and if you are interested in learning more about uh, the topic of the religious founding in America, some recommended reading. I have not read uh, the John Fee book, but it was recommended by a professor of mine. So. Hi, Nikki. Thanks for showing up, Nikki. That's cool. Thanks for the support. Yeah, great. Dr. Dead. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> um, any other questions, comments, concerns? Yes. Um, do you have any uh, similar connection to the Latin motion? I mean, why is there a Latin motion? Why is there a Latin motto? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, the Enlightenment era, when the when America was basically founded, um, thought very highly of the Romans which is why all our buildings look like Roman temples, or our public buildings look like Roman temples. If you go to the capital in Jeff City, it looks like a giant version of the Temple of Jupiter. Um, and so they picked Latin because they liked Roman symbols. That's also why they picked the fasces, because it's a Roman symbol. They're, um, they just really liked it. That's the reason. Do you have anything for the Latin? Why can't you just make it English? Why are you asking? I haven't explained what it means. Oh. How do I explain what it means? No, no. Why do you, are you still sticking with the Latin version? Why don't you just make it English? 
Because you have to explain, right? Yeah, that's what we always do. Now, ever since the deal in uh, North Carolina, ever since explaining that what it meant in English worked, now we do that every time. We say, why don't you do e pluribus unum or its English equivalent from anyone? Because, um, like you said, most people are like, what? Uh, most people don't have the education that people like Jefferson and Adams and um, Madison had. So, yeah. I've seen some stamps that you can actually block out the Engadi Trust with. You can buy them on our website. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I've usually taken a marker and block it up. But is that yelling into the wind? Is that futile? Is there any benefit uh, to doing that? In your opinion? I enjoy doing it because it's like just very cathartic for me. It's just like, <laughs> screw you. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think it's a fun thing for our supporters to do. Um, I don't think most people look at the money. Um, so that's probably kind of irrelevant, but I enjoy doing it just because it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, just as a personal observation, talking about um, religion in the public, Yeah. I've kind of noticed a trend that I'm curious to see what your experience is, but using the word public, I think, confuses a lot of people. Mm. So there's a difference between like being in public and praying if you're, like, say, at a restaurant a versus point. public property, yeah. which is government. So have you seen the same kind of confusion? or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I have to remember where it was. I think it was in Lebanon. It's always Missouri. Um, the sheriff put it on the vehicles there, mm -hmm. and the newspaper ran an opinion poll and it says, do you support Sheriff, where the his name is, putting this on there. And the number one response um, was, uh, I'm gonna have to paraphrase because I don't have a front name, but it is, yes, because we should protect the sheriff's right to, to practice his religion publicly. That was the number one response. It was like 56% of people answered that. So there is, they don't understand public as in just being in public like right now or a public official as in I work for the government. They don't understand that difference and they also don't understand that um, public officials, government officials, don't have the same constitutional protections that they have when they're operating as private citizens. So yes, the sheriff has his religious freedom to do whatever he wants, but not while he's the sheriff or not while he's acting in his official capacity. And there's a disconnect there. They really don't get that at all. It's really frustrating. That's actually the most frustrating thing in the world, when you have to like sit down and explain. It's like the Kim Davis argument. Why can't Kim Davis deny marriage licenses because of her religion? Okay, Kim Davis can use her religion and hate gay people all she wants. Good for her. Two thumbs up. But when she's as a public official, she has to do her job for everybody. And people don't get the difference between those two things at all. There was... Yeah. Real quick, I, I might have missed it because I came in about 10 minutes late, and I apologize. But uh, did you address, has there been any Supreme Court decision that deals with the motto and its declaration? From what I understood, there were only extremely yeah, high courts, but not the Supreme Court. I don't think there's been one in the Supreme Court. Uh, there have been Supreme Court cases about under God and pledge. Right. But to my knowledge, there isn't one dealing with the motto itself. Um, because they lose, they lose, they lose, and they don't, the people fighting it don't want to take it to the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court rules against them, you know, it basically sets a precedent and kills it for everybody. Um, I'm kind of hopeful um, if uh, we can get a more liberal judge, um, different groups like FFRF or Americans United might be more willing to go after it that way um, because it's going to have to take a Supreme Court ruling. Yeah. Are there any particular arguments that you have that would get people to understand that if, a, that if a, an elected official in their official capacity is exercising their religion, that is actually them asserting religious authority over you? Um, I try to explain that, but most people can't see past their own Christian privilege, so it's irrelevant to them. It doesn't affect me. Because they identify with the officer. Well, they, are, they, are, right, they identify with that, and they identify with his religion. And um, yeah, so no, nothing I've, not yet, and I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> nothing I've found yet works to explain that to people. Because um, they just, 
well, it doesn't affect me. Or they, or they always bring up, well, it's freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. They bring that up a lot. Anyone else? Okay, that's my spiel. Thank you.